In today's video, I'm going to talk about how we would approach and analyze question in our IGCC geography exam. First of all, I'm going to talk about what does that actual command word mean, how we can break that down and how that can help us to understand how we might answer the question. If you look in the, the IGCC specification, you see this slightly complex and wordy definition of what analyze actually means. I've highlighted certain bits, which I'm going to break down just to make it a little bit clearer about what it is. This yellow section, where it talks about breaking down individual components. All that is asking you to do is that in your answer, you're going to have to look at different factors. So this could be causes, this could be effects. It might be a bit of both. But here we're going to look at different factors um, when we're discussing our answer. So the key word to remember here is factors. We'll use our wider geographical knowledge to help here, but factors is, is one of the things that we're going to have to look at, different factors. The green bit is here, which talks about cause and effects and interrelationships. The key bit there is to talk about relationships. we have talking about factors. We need to expand on those factors and talk about how they might interrelate. So how one factor might actually affect another, or how one factor might cause something to occur. So here we therefore get this idea that we talk about factors, causes and effects, and show how they interrelate with each other. The last bit, the blue bit here, says evidence-based connections, and all that we need to remember here is that we need to prove our argument. We're talking about factors, we're saying how they're related, and we're proving it. We are a lawyer, we have proof to back up our statements and our argument. Here we can do this by using the source. Um, we can use stats and place names, but also terms to do that. And we can also bring in a bit of wider knowledge, but most of the evidence is going to come from the source provided to us in the exam. That's how we break it down. Factors, relationships, and proof. And I'm going to show you a writing structure that will help you to actually do that in your uh, essays. So this is the structure I'm going to uh, advocate that you use. It's called Peel, uh, and in the link we have a bit of a judgment. But a point, this is where we make our argument. We, uh, we, we put this at the start of our paragraph, we write it a sentence, and this is what we're actually trying to say. Then we expand upon that argument. We develop this over two or three sentences. This is where we bring in our wider geographical knowledge and then use connectives to help it link together. We essentially should be able to answer this question without a source. That's the best way I'd approach it. Try and see if you could answer it if you didn't have a source, and then just wedge in the source information to prove your argument. So it's point first, then we expand on that point, and then comes the evidence. So this is, again, being a lawyer, you've made an argument, you just need a bit of proof to actually get you to sound like you have a legitimate reason for saying that. We'd use the source, a bit of wider knowledge, but stats, place, and terminology, like I said before, will be coming from that source mainly, and that would be one or two sentences. The link is simply concluding what we've said. What I mean by that is we're going back to the heart of the question, and we will make a small judgment in that answer, so there's judgment throughout. So this is a really compact um, structure. If you learn how to do this now, this can feed you all the way up into uh, A-level and beyond. And it's just a good structure for writing any sort of argument. People ask, how many do I need to do? Often, I would recommend to students that doing two really well will be better than doing three badly. But some of the top people aiming for a nine will try to do three nicely and compactly in the 10 or 11 minutes they have to answer this question. Now I'm going to go through an example question and I'm going to get you to stop it and see what you would do to answer this question. Here's a source that's been given. It's a picture of a slum after the 2010 Haiti earthquake. But more importantly, the question is analyze the different impacts from an earthquake. As I said before, see how you try and answer that question before you looked at the source. If you didn't have a source, what would be the knowledge you could bring in to answer that question? And then we're going to use the bits of evidence from this source to kind of prove what we're trying to say. What I want you to do now is stop the video with a pen and paper. Actually think about what would you write for your appeal structure um, if you had that question and that source provided to you. Think about what is the knowledge that you're going to bring in to actually answer that question. What those cause and effects that we talked about, those factors that we might want to consider. 
Um, how are you going to argue this? What point are you going to make? How can you say that in a uh, very, very small sentence? And then only go and try and see if you can prove it using the source. So try and think about the knowledge. What actually are you going to say about causes and effects? Can you say this in a nice point and then develop it? And then um, can you prove that using the source? Stop the video now, spend about five minutes doing that, and then come and have a look and compare your answer to uh, one way that you could answer it uh, on the next page. So I've had a go at uh, approaching this question. There's the question at the top. This wouldn't be my complete answer. It would just be my first argument. I try and write at least two or three of these um, if I had 11 minutes to do this. And this would be my point. Developing countries will often experience high levels of damage to buildings. It's only one sentence. It's stating my entire argument very, very sharply. I then got a couple of sentences expanding on that. Again, I'm using my wider geographical knowledge to do this bit. This is because I do not have financial resources to build earthquake proof buildings. I've given an example, so using rubber shock absorbers. This means there are more, they are more likely to collapse when ground shaking occurs. And as a result, the death uh, number of death and injuries will be high. As you can see, I've used connectives all the way through to really make sure it flows nicely and the examiner knows exactly where I'm going and that all these things are connected. Then I'm going to prove it like a good lawyer. In figure 1a, we can see in Haiti, a developing country, most of the buildings have collapsed in the slum as they were poorly built, causing a num high number of deaths. I've used what I can see in the picture just to back up what I've already said. Then in my link and judgment, I have brought it back to the heart of the question and made a small judgment. Therefore, the damage to buildings in developing countries will be significant, which I've underlined just to prove that I'm talking about a judgment here, and have severe impacts. I might next time put severe short-term impacts just to make it a little bit better, but you can always see as you write an answer, there's always room for improvement. But what I see is a really clear argument using my geographical knowledge and using evidence afterwards to, to prove it with a nice point and link kind of on either side of it to make it one consinct uh, argument. So what I'd like you to have a go is go back and look at the question again, see if you can have another go at writing what would be your second argument using the same source. Again, start with the knowledge, try and see what point you'd make and then build in the evidence from the source afterwards.